So, what is filtration? There are three different types of filtration, mechanical, biological, and chemical. We'll start with mechanical. So what does the mechanical filtration do? Basically, mechanical filtration is there in the form of filter sponges um, to filter out the particulate matter in the water. So uneaten food, poop, you know, plant waste, you know, debris, all that sort of stuff. It, that is what that's designed to filter out. There are three different types of filter sponges. You've got a coarse foam for the heavy matter, you've got a medium foam for the finer matter, and you've got a polishing pad or a fine foam for which polishes the water, gets rid of all the fine particulate matter, uh, which gives you the crystal clear water. Um, secondly, you've got the biological filtration, which is in the form of you know, your ceramic rings, your, you know, your sintered glass, your lava rock, um, I personally use Biohome Ultimate. That is that gives you the best chance of getting a full cycle filtration, which I'll explain later on in the video. Um, this is the most important type of filtration, is your biological. This is what makes the water chemically safe for your animals to live in, so they don't get sick, you don't have respiratory issues, um, you know, have shell issues, skin issues, all that type of stuff. This is what that helps get rid of, uh, make sure the water is safe. However, to get good biological filtration, you need to have brilliant mechanical filtration. Because if your biological filtration, if your biological media gets clogged with any waste, like particulate waste, it becomes inefficient. Um, so the mechanical filtration is very important still. Um, thirdly, you've got your chemical filtration, um, which is in the form of like active, activated charcoal. Um, I personally don't use any chemical filtration because it can sometimes do um, more harm than good. It can take rid of, you know, if you're trying to treat your fish or, or something like that, it, it can get rid of um, the medication in the water. Um, it's good if you want to get rid of tarnishing, you use charcoal to get rid of tarnishing if you've got driftwood. However, I don't require that in my tank. So those are the three types of filtration. So as you can see from the diagram there, the water will be sucked in in the water passage, pass up through the first foam, which will be typically a coarse foam, which is your mechanical filtration. That will take out all the, all the waste, uh, like the poop and the uneaten food. Um, we'll then pass through the ceramic rings, which is very unusual to see that on a typical in-tank filter. Um, they do have very limited biological filtration. Uh, which is why I personally don't use them. Um, and then you see it passes through the ceramic rings there. That will be a second, on the, as it comes out there, that will either be a polishing pad or that's where you could put like a chemical filtration such as like activated carbon. And then it's pumped back out to the tank. Um, for these types of filters, there's a few pros. Um, they're good for added flow in the tank. If you wanted to add a bit more a bit more current, if you've got like a map turtle or something like that, something that requires quite high flow water, they're brilliant for that. Um, also, if you know, it depends on the design of the tank, they're also very good for getting rid of dead spots from filtration. Um, they're compact, you know, they're relatively cheap. Um, they're better for the small aquariums because um, if, you're, if you've only got a little hatchling, they're good for that. Um, because an external filter, although you can turn them down, they do have generally quite high flow. So they, in a, you know, in a small aquarium, it's gonna be overpowering. Um, as for cons, they, they don't hold, they don't have a massive capacity for your biological filtration, which is massively, massively important. Um, you know, a lot of them don't have any capacity for it at all. And if they do, it's very limited. Um, they clog up easily. And obviously they take up, they take up extra room in the tank for, you know, for swimming and various things like that. So that's the cons for that. So next we're gonna be looking at the hang on the back type filters. These are generally quite a common filter to be used in various aquariums or new turtle enclosures. Um, they, they hang on the back of the filter as, you know, as described. 
Uh, they've got two little hooks, sort of like clip style things, which literally just sit over the rim of the aquarium. Um, they have a plastic intake tube, um, which sits down into the water, which will draw water up through there. Um, it depends on the style of, and the design, but they can either, the water then will drop down to the bottom and be pulled up through, through some foams uh, or bio, and then biological media. Sometimes you get a chemical filtration on the top, like a activated charcoal or something like that, and then spat out back to the tank. Or they can go sideways, you know, from left to right or right to left, depending, um, you know, through the same sort of design again, through, through a foam and then through a media. Um, there's a couple of style of outlets back to the tank. They can have a waterfall style. So as they tip over the edge there, where you can see the arrow at the top, um, coming back into the tank, that can be a waterfall style. Um, or they can have what's connect, you can connect, they have a little outlet which you can connect like a spray bar to, something like that, um, which can you know create a nice spray bar effect across the top, create a nice surface agitation, it's quite quiet. Um, yeah, so that's the hang on the back filters. So what are the pros of these filters? Um, they're easy to maintain. Um, the, the sponges, which are your mechanical filtration, are generally held in a cartridge. So you literally just pull the cartridge out, rinse it through with you know, your aquarium water um, in a bucket, um, pop, the ca pop the cartridge back in and, and it's done. Um, they are very cheap comparatively to your typical canister filters. Um, so that's why they are quite common, I think. Um, however, they do have cons. They don't have the best flow rate. Um, they, don't, they will not create a lot of current in the tank. Um, they take, you know, and they can be quite noisy uh, as opposed, you know, with the waterfall style. If the water level doesn't come up to where the waterfall outlet is, it will drop into the tank and create noise, which is obviously if it's in like your bedroom or your front room, that will get annoying. Um, a few other, a few other things, a little little pointers out. They do have a better capacity for media than your typical in tank filter, so they are better for that. Um, so that's another good point for them. So that is, in a nutshell, your hang on the back filters. So now we move on to the external filters or canister filters, as they are known. Um, in my opinion, these are the best filters and personally, this is what I use on mine. Um, they typically sit below the tank in the, in the tank stand. Uh, they have two pipes, an intake and an outlet. They both go round the back of the aquarium and connect to the top with what's called a rim connector. Um, and both pipes sit down into the water. The intake pipe typically sits at the bottom of the tank or just above. And the outlet pipe is obviously as to where you want to put that, where you want the flow of water to be. So what happens is the canister filter will draw water in from the intake. It will travel down the pipe, out of the aquarium, down the pipe, into the filter. It then gets filtered through the through the sponges, through the biological media, through the chemical if you want or required. Um, it then gets pumped back out of the filter, back up the outlet pipe, back into your tank. Um, so that is how they work. So what is the pros of these filters then? Um, they have a, a fantastic capability of mechanical filtration. You know, you can, in, you can typically get a coarse, medium and a fine pad in these filters, no problem at all. Um, and that's what gives you the, you know, the crystal clear water clarity that you see. Um, and that's what we all want. They have a fantastic capability and capacity for the biological media, which is the most important type of, of filtration. Um, they have fantastic flow rates. And if you have a map turtle or a tank that requires high flow water, um, good current, they are brilliant for that. And also they take up very little room. You know, you've only got two pipes going in the, into the water, so that creates maximum swim space and is less of an eyesore. However, they do have cons like everything. Um, if not set up properly, they can be what's referred to as a nitrate factory. Um, and what is that? Well, what's called the nitrogen cycle is, you know, you feed, you feed the fish, feed your turtle, that creates waste uh, with, with poop, with wee, with um, uneaten food. Um, 
which is ammonia, which can create ammonia, which is extremely bad for our animals, um, like toxic. Um, so the bacteria in the filter will grow um, to accommodate and to take care of the ammonia. It then creates, turns ammonia into nitrite, and then bacteria creates, turns that into nitrate. So it goes from ammonia to nitrite to nitrate. Um, however, nitrate is extremely hard to get rid of. Um, typically, it's done with water changes. Um, however, there are medias out there that also take care of your nitrate. I personally use Biohome Ultimate in mine filters, and that has got a great surface area inside and out. So that does take care of the nitrate. Um, so that's not a concern for me. I do do weekly water changes on my tank still, um, but that's how I filter my tank. Um, also another con for the um, external filters is the fact they are expensive. Um, they can be quite pricey. Um, but if you've got, a, you've got a large tank, that is the only way to filter it properly. So, you know, that is the only, that is another con for them. Um, so yeah, to sum up, they are my favorite type of filter. We, I do use them quite, you know, in all my tanks, they are brilliant. Um, so yeah, that is external filters. So now we know the various stages of filtration and which filters are available for our turtle tank. What else do we need to know? Well, typically for turtles, you need to provide three to four times the, the capacity of the tank in filtration. So what does this mean? If your tank is 100 gallons, we need to provide three to 400 gallons of filtration to be able to adequately filter the tank as they are so messy. Also, we need a high flow tank, high flow filter in our tank for a map turtle. If you have a musk turtle, it's not quite so important. You don't need such high flow. However, they still do require high filtration as they are equally as messy. Um, and lastly, we now know that biological filtration is the most important and that mechanical filtration needs to be brilliant in order to so our biological filtration can take place. Thank you very much for watching. There will be more videos, so stay tuned. I am Josh. Thank you very much. Goodbye.